tell ye, and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient times? Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Welcome back to another No God Else podcast. This is your host, Mario. We are doing a fourth iteration of our talks about denominations. And I want to stress to all new listeners that this is not a put down. This is not a, a condemnation to any uh, denomination. This is an attempt to try to, uh, I guess, show that there is a pattern of belief systems that include theories and hypotheses of, um, I guess, wise people and traditions of men that have incorporated themselves into the body um, to the point where their theories and sal- and salvation now are one. We have gotten to the point now where we believe that if you do not take our theory, our theological theory about how to explain God or how to explain his son, then whatever Christ did as our savior and whatever Christ did as far as establishing the new covenant and ending the old, whatever he did is irrelevant if you don't say what we say. Or if you don't go to our denominational church. And the point of this is to show that we have gotten to the point where we have placed those theories ahead of God. And we have placed those theories ahead of his word. We basically go around trying to fit his word and make his word say what the theories believe or what the theory or hypothesis have been stated believe instead of making the theories and theoretical point of view fit inside of the word of God we're doing the exact opposite and I've, we've spoke about um, in some of my podcasts about all you know some of the denominations going forth from my experience with the Catholic Church to my experience experience with Baptist um, churches, my experience with one is Pentecostal, um, and what I'm trying to lay out a foundation about is to show that if we separate and sever the theories, the theoretical point of views from our belief systems to set them aside into their proper place and then focus on the salvation the things that actually is you know quoted as things that actually save us and the things that actually are required of us to you know for us to present ourselves in front of the lord for forgiveness and the things that will present us a holy sacrifice and to be you know welcomed into his kingdom if we focus on those factors alone, you will see that those factors have nothing to do with the theoretical point of views of denominational separations. Um, and that is my you know, goal for this podcast um, series for the denominations is to show that all of these concepts and theories that man follow have gone, gone away from just the simple, the simplicity of of the salvation that Christ laid out for us. So um, one of the founding scriptures or points of references is when Jesus asked Peter, who do you say I am? You know, uh, that was a very, to me, a very defining point and defining um, conversation that he had with Peter because based on Peter's response, he Christ laid his whole foundation based on that response the foundation of the church based on that 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 response from peter so when peter replied to christ he said you are the son of the living god the messiah now this goes against a lot of different you know concepts because here peter did not call christ a trinity Peter did not even explain the Trinity. Peter didn't even call Christ God. P- 
Peter identify Christ as what Christ has always identified himself and is what the only requirement for your salvation is actually predicated on and that is that you accept Christ as the son of the living God the Messiah the long foretold for Messiah that the Jews were waiting on that is the, the, the foundation of your salvation your salvation is not and, and has never and will never be based on a quiz or a question that you'll have to answer when you get up to heaven to explain the Trinity or to explain oneness or to explain any other theoretical point of view that man has come up with in the past centuries. Long after the scriptures were created, long after Christ had already died, long after the day of Pentecost, long after people had died and were di and died inside of the salvation given to them by Christ. Long after all of that were, was transpiring, these denominations pop up and all of them pop up out of sure will to try to identify and come up with theories about what one needs when the scripture has already identified what you needed. And doing that, you find that the denominations as they start to form, separations start to become more evident and the body of Christ is weakened because of that. And my will for us is to, I want us to get to the point where we come back under that umbrella of Christ being our savior and Christ being the son of the living God and the Messiah that foundation that Christ Church was built on is where we should be returning back to. And so, again, um, the denominational talks uh, that I've laid before, you might want to go back and listen to them to see some of the things that had occurred um, during my studies with different denominations. I, I had taken years out of my life to basically study and be, and be, find out what is you know, required to become one of different denominations. Um, and um, the next denomination on the list today is the Mormons. Now, I know some people that may uh, not be Mormons um, sh kind of shrivel away at that that statement or the um, the word Mormons or the denomination Mormons. But I kind of want to, before I, you know, lay the foundation about what, what happened during the time with them to, to tell you what, how they are different from all the denominations and where salvation severed off into theory. Um, I want to kind of go back and, and acknowledge the fact that I believe that Mormons are, along with Jehovah's Witnesses, are two f of the different denominations that actually stand out in their actions and in their way of life a little bit more than most denominations now what i say when i'm when i'm saying that i mean by is that they tolerate no sin whatsoever hardly you know i mean i i don't know of any sin that actually they tolerate um outside from their you know misunderstanding about scripture um, and if that's a sin, then, you know, we basically all are condemned for that. But if you look at their actions about how they treat others and how they go about their lives and how they try to avoid the things that we, you know, as what we call so what we call so-called better Christians that gawk at them and hate them and spit fire at them at the, you know, at their at our doorstep. I've actually witnessed, you know, so much hate from that. And yet they are the ones that kind of represent Christ a little bit more than we do. They're the ones that are, you know, going door to door and keeping a positive attitude and willing to sacrifice a little bit more than, you know, than most of the common denominations out there that I that I've seen, you know, and. I've seen everything from people cursing them out to threaten them with guns and turn around and say, you know, no, you're not of God. You know, I believe in Jesus. Oh, you believe in Jesus, but you're you're acting as if you're Satan. 
you're acting hatefully to them you're you're threatening them and that's supposed to rep- you know represent your savior you know that i don't get that you know if if they believe in a different christ than we do then why is it the, that if we believe in the right christ why do we represent him so wrongfully while the Christ that they represent or what we call what we say they call you know what we say that they believe in a different Christ you know that's our way of trying to again separate and point fingers they if they say they believe in Christ they believe in Christ just because just because they have a different point of view about who Christ was in his title or in his responsibilities or they have a different theory about how he came into being doesn't make them believe in a different Christ. And I, and I get so, ups, you know, so upset and concerned about people that that say things like that. Oh, they don't believe in the same Christ, I believe. Well, for one starter, um, the Christ that you believe, if, if it was just based on the fact that you believe something different about Christ or you believed in a theory different about Christ that that meant that the Christ the Yeshua that died for our sin, for our sins and rose the third day if you say that you believe in that person and you have a different theory about that person that automatically makes that makes that person not the same Christ that died that's false because Number one, the biggest conclusion to that, the biggest hole to that in, every, in any denomination that does that needs to understand and wake up and realize that the very fact that you call Christ Jesus is a theory in itself. It's a false theory nonetheless. And here's where I'm going with this. Christ's name was never Jesus. That's a big shock to most people, but it's the truth. You can you can look it up yourself. You can look up the 1811 King James Bible, the oldest English Bible translation that we have. And you will find that nowhere in that Bible, in that English speaking Bible, is the word name Jesus. Matter of fact, you will not find a letter J inside of that entire scripture or entire entire Bible. Why? It's because J, the letter J in the sound was never created. It was, I mean, I'm sorry, it was never, never existing until 400 years ago when we created it. So the very fact that you call him a different name that you can't actually translate from his original name, which is Yeshua. um, The fact that you do that, we could turn around, you could turn around and, and by the same principle say you believe in a different Christ. But you don't do that. You accept and most people that know that fact ex- still accept the fact that they should that they call him Jesus and they think it's a it's appropriate and it's true and it's just even though they know that there's no way that that when the angel um, Gabriel came down and spoke to to Mary when scriptures reveal who's Christ you know who's who's his name that there was no way that that name could have been an English name could have been a even a roman name or uh, whatever name however however way they justify translating um or transliterating his name into jesus you cannot get that you can only translate from existing language that existed at the time of the original you know the original spoken word so if the language at the time was spoken then any language that existed at the time can be transliterated into different forms however with ours we made our the letter j up only 400 years ago so that means that long before the bible was ever completed i mean long after the bible had been completed all translations that existed at that time had been done so you cannot take a letter that never existed in any language and apply it to a name and say ha that's his name that's his real name so 
there's no such thing as John. There's no such thing as Jerusalem. It's actually Jerusalem. And so if we take and I'm again, this is not a put down. What I'm trying to get you people to understand is that the same glass that you look through to judge others, you are not looking back through to judge yourself. Before you start pointing fingers at Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, or any other denomination that is not yours to say that they don't believe in Christ simply because they have a different theory or different concept about what he did or what he was before or whatever, whatever your excuse is to point a finger at them, point it right back at yourself. Because you know just as you have false theories and, and you have just as many wrong theories and wrong beliefs as they do probably or even more so we need to understand that we need to be more sensitive about how we go about condemning people and how we go about persecuting others now if there are theories and concepts that people believe in that are false that the scripture does not support then you can say such but understand at the same time that just as those things those things exist on their part, they exist on your part as well. So with my time with the Mormons, what I've noticed is that they continued that same tradition. They allowed a man to come in and come up with conclusions and theories that were not supported by scripture. And it was due, due to these theories that they um, basically became the denomination that they are today and some of the concepts that stood out during my time with them um when i was studying you know what they what they believed in and when i spoke to them when they came to my house and they i think they came to my house like three times before they never came back again because i presented questions and opened up their minds to the possibility that they may just you know be you know, understanding things a little bit different than what the scriptures teach. So one of the main concepts is that the person that they believe in, that they they used to um, basically create this denomination was Joseph Smith. And Joseph Smith was an unbeliever. Of, uh, he wasn't a follower of Christ. And he basically went about each denomination that was around his, I guess, village at the time. And he was trying to basically become, I guess, infiltrated into the to the to their to their mindset and their their societal you know acceptance of their denominations, but yet not accepting it. So he went about basically going from each denomination, not believing that he should be you know held to the standards that each denomination gave him. So he went about you know. Um, you know, like, uh, I guess, traveling, and he was wandering in the wilderness or whatever that they claim, and he's just so happiness to be approached by an angel that gave him solid gold tablets, basically, that this angel presented him with, um, like, the hidden scriptures that were supposedly lost and were written in, like, a different type of Egyptian writing um, that no one has ever heard of or seen in history. I mean, you cannot find um, any kind of hieroglyphics or any kind of writing based on the Egyptian writing he claimed to um, basically have found in these these golden tablets. And there is a lot of concern about the weight of the tablets that he claimed to have been given or found. Um, and they were such uh, a weight that it would take you know a very strong 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 individual to actually put this on their back or hold it and run through the forest the way he claimed he did and fighting off bandits all while holding these tablets and um, a lot of people found fault and found concern in some of the facts that he gave so what he did was he come up he came up with uh, these three witnesses and these three men that i think that vouched for for the for him and said that they saw the tablets but all three men basically later on said that they never did and that they were lying and then you know he 
then later on they come back and they came back and said no they were telling the truth so basically the witnessing that they they say that they have you know they they really nail down or really focus on the fact that they that they that their prophet was verified by three individuals but they never go into detail about these three individuals de- claiming that the statement that they wrote or the statement that they declared was false they never bring that up and the reason why they never bring that up because most of the time that the mormons come to your home they are coming to your home with new recruits and those new recruits don't really know all of the facets of their beliefs because they try to stair step them up they don't want them knowing all things up front because it would make them question basically the um the validity of the statements and the belief systems that they have been presented so when they come to your house they come to your house with prepared questions or prepared answers um something that they don't look like they stumble around in because that makes people question whether or not they know what they're talking about so they try to avoid any kind of conversation about subject matters that they are not prepared for but unfortunately you know it was one of those cases where i you know gave them the floor but i did not allow them to control the floor and i wanted to talk about the things that i knew in the scripture kind of pointed out some of the conclusions that they were not willing to look at so One of the things that they came up with or one of the things that's written in their journal is that um, Joseph Smith writes to his people telling them that he he, he was a boasting man. He said, I have more to boast of than any man had. He said, I am the only man that has ever been able to keep a whole church together since the days of Adam. Wow. A large majority of the whole have stood by me. Neither Paul, John, Peter, nor Jesus ever did it. I boast that no man ever did such a work as I. Wow. The followers of Jesus ran away from him, but the Latter-day Saints never ran away from me yet. Hmm. So this is a quote from, um, I think, uh, uh, journals. um, I forget what they call it. Um let's see what was it yeah there it is it's called the journal of discourses and um this article or this this thing can be found in their writings and their holy scriptures of the things that they read and believe in but again they don't really go into this with their new recruits they don't show joseph smith as this man that is boastful and prideful they don't show this man as claiming that he is more important, his ministry is more important than Jesus Christ. And their excuse to this is that they believe that the Mormon church is a restoration of the original church, that the church that Jesus laid the foundation for actually did die. And opposite to the scripture that said, you know, nothing will be able to defeat that church and nothing would ever stop the church and the gates of hell won't prevail against it according to them the gates of hell did prevail against it and they are the start of the new church now because all other denominations uh, are false all other denominations are false with theirs so there you have it and one of the concluding matters to it um that was very shocking was that they have gotten to the point where they don't believe that Jesus is enough for your salvation. In other words, you can't just believe that Jesus is the son of the living God and the Messiah that died for your sins and rose the third day. You can't just believe that. They say you have to also believe that among all the other things you do, you're, if you live your life holy and you, you, and you believe in Christ as your Lord and Savior and you, you know, ex- you, you do everything you can to make sure that you follow Yahweh's commandments through his son. If you do all that, thi- all those things that if you do not believe that Joseph Smith is a true prophet of God, you can't make it to heaven. That he is the key now that no longer is it, you know, one name under heaven by which you may be saved. It's one name under heaven by which you may be saved and <laughs> Joseph Smith. So, um, needless to say that's not in the scriptures guys and uh you and i know that that's not in the scriptures and unfortunately for mormons they know that too but they 
do not accept the fact that that is not needed. They believe that this is definitely needed, even though there's no scripture that bases, you know, based this um, this conclusion on any other finding, or any other, you know, hidden document outside from, you know, Joseph Smith's writing. Um, but none of the ancient texts hint to another savior, hint to another, you know, avatar, hint to another priesthood. Um, none of them mention anything about Joseph Smith. And one of the biggest things was that I brought up to them and said, well, being that Revelations is a prophecy book and it gives a conclusion to the matter. And, th and this is something I bring up to a lot of denominations, too, that nowhere in Revelations do you find any conclusion or point back to a denomination, to a specific denomination. Nowhere in Revelations, when all is said and done, so Revelation is in the future, it's done, it's completed, it is a culmination of everything that we're going to live through things that we haven't even seen yet it has already john had already bypassed all that so he was at the end of the matter and in the end if you notice all the conversations that took place in the revelations none of them surrounded whether or not god was a trinity none of them surrounded whether or not there was going to be a question of whether or not you believed he was one or how the one how how you define the one or how you define manifestations or whether or not you went to a certain building or joseph smith standing in the gate saying do you believe i'm a true prophet of god yes yay or nay you can enter or not none of these conclusions even hint are even hinted in the revelations none of that so that tells me without a without even flinching that none of these concepts will define my salvation none of those concepts will define your salvation guys if those concepts define your salvation when peter told jesus that he was the, the son of the living god and the messiah why didn't why didn't jesus say hey what else do you believe that I came from the Father's belly? Do you believe that there is only one God and that that one is defined not by manifestations, but by three individual people or not by three individual people, but by the word, by using the word manifestations? None of those conclusions did Christ go into. None of those things did he require of Peter. And matter of fact, do throughout all of Christ's ministry did he ever require that of any person to grant them forgiveness salvation or any other blessing whatsoever you cannot find it in scripture you only find it with man man has placed that burden on us man has gotten us to the point where we have to confess what they say in order for Christ salvation to work on our behalf that's blasphemous christ does not need a theory of man for his salvation to work in your life so reversing back to the um mormons another conclusion um that they didn't like facing was the fact that Joseph Smith confessed that God was a man and was once a man. Now, we're not talking about the theory about, you know, Christ being God and God being Christ and everything. He's saying that the Father, Yahweh, was a nothing more than a physical man at one time that was that was given birth, you know, given birth to and he was created i'm assuming created in a different universe i think is what they say and that universe had a different god over it and that god created all of his all of yahweh's people and when yahweh realized that he could become a god he became a god now according to isaiah jehovah said that or yahweh said that he knows not not any is there another God beside me? Is there another Yahweh 
beside me. I know not of none. I know not of any. Now, if Yahweh says he doesn't know of any, and they claim that Yahweh was once a man and had a God that created him, wouldn't Yahweh know of another God beside him? Um, I think yes, he would. Now, you would have to come up with two conclusions now. That Yahweh is either lying or Joseph Smith is actually lying. Yeah, I'd leave it up to you. Lying or misinformed. I'll, I'll, I'll straighten that out a little bit. Maybe he wasn't lying, but misinformed by a false spirit. Nevertheless, the fact of it is, is that the scriptures do not support their conclusions. And they don't like you bringing up those conclusions because most of them don't even know that those things are written in the journals that they believe in. And when you show them, they are shocked, just like they were when they came to my house. They were so shocked that they came back two more times after with different elders. And each elder left to go, you know, the first elders left my house and one got more elders to come to my house. And they still couldn't con come, you know, couldn't come to a conclusion to the matter and explain um, the the information that I had given to them about their writings. None of them had a, had an, a conclusion to how in the world Yahweh could be lying and knowing that he had another God because he was created by another God, but yet he's telling us there's none, and then he knows of none. He knows not any, no other Yahweh. So, needless to say, they don't come back to my house anymore. Um, we're probably on the ban list, and um, I, I, you know, I, I thought that their their approach and their their determination was something to be um, definitely appreciated. I would say, um, but again, if you look at their their belief systems and the fact that also their prophet believed that there were men walking on the sun and moon um, and lived 4,000 years on the sun and moon. That does bring a lot of questions up about the validity of the the other statements and belief systems that they have. And I think they use, you know, the thing that most denominations use. They use a little bit of truth and say, ha, if this is true, then everything is true. And, you know, we're, we're perfect now, so you need to follow us because we proved that that one little thing over here that we believe in is true. So if that's, the, if that's the case, then everything we believe in is true. And that, again, is not the case. Um, they say that Joseph Smith predicted the Civil War. Yes, he did put down that he believed that there was going to be a Civil War. Predicted? That's a strong word. The reason why is because even at the time of Joseph Smith's writings about the Civil War, there was news news articles and word going around all around where he lived stating that there might be a Civil War coming up soon. So for him to just conclude on the same matter and come to the same conclusion that was being broadcast all over um, and being you know written about in articles, um, I'm sorry, in news news uh, articles and newspapers and things of that sort, for him to come to that same conclusion and then try to use that to say that he saw that, you know, as a prophecy, and it came, tr you know, it came true, and he he was delivered by you know delivered this information by God. That is a far stretch. The only way that can work is that no other man had ever seen or concluded to that matter. And all of a sudden, you come up with the conclusion and you claim that the conclusion was given to you by God and it comes to pass. That's how prophecy works. But just saying that one day there's going to be a war in the United States and I say that and there's a war in the United States and that's been predicted, you know, all of my life. And just because I agree with it all of a sudden, that doesn't make me responsible for prophecy. So they use that to say that, you know, ha, he's a prophet. He's a true prophet because he was right about this. But what they don't conclude is the fact that he made oh so many other prophecies that never came to pass. And based on definition alone, according to scripture, the moment a prophet says that this is going to come to pass and that he's speaking for God and it does not. He is considered a false prophet. 
they skip over that. So because of that, I, you know, I was never able to really come to an agreement um, with their denomination beliefs. And therefore, you know, that ended this study and the conclusion to the matter about where they stood as far as their beliefs and how they separate from, you know, the scripture beliefs and what identifies as salvation. So if you guys um, have witnessed any Mormons, I you know urge you guys just please don't don't be so cruel and harsh to them. They really believe that they're doing the right thing. And even if they believe in a different theory and different concepts of, of God and how they, and how God came to be, that just makes them wrong about the theory. That doesn't make them, you know, a bad, you know, a bad gr group of people. No more than it makes us, you know, bad about the things that we believe that are false. So I hope this, you know, actually resonates with you guys and hopes you, uh, I'm sorry, helps you um, get to a better place and a better understanding about different denominations and hopefully you'll find yourself somewhere in that block and you'll find something to kind of relate to and just understand that we what we want and what we all want really is to is to satisfy Christ and his father and the only way we're going to get to that point is that we're obeying his scripture and we are not taking upon ourselves to rewrite scripture and to rewrite covenant and rewrite you know conclusions to matters that we have no power or say so over and i believe if we do that and focus on the things that that god has laid aside for us to focus on through his son i believe we'll we'll come to a a closer example of what christ is supposed to come back for and that is that one true church you know his his church his body what he established what he died for what he was resurrected for all the things that he he was present that was presented under his feet these are the things that we are struggling to get back to and i hope we do one day thanks for visiting no god else this is your host, Mario, signing out.